Hello, no, no, my friends. I'm breaking the screw. See the table. Got little Missy sitting off to the right uh, back here somewhere on the shelf. Is Frankie. She just got done gracing us with the cat box. Uh, it is what it is, right? So we are now looking at a, another installment for second edition of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the Forgotten Realms official game accessory called the Anorak. The desert of all deserts, right? Great desert where the winds wail, and the grave of the lost princes, the great sand sea, and not a place many sane people, folk in the Forgotten Realms want to visit, but there are plenty of other sort who come hence to find wonders both beautiful and dangerous. Right? So, well, like I said, there was a point in my life when I, I bought modules like a lot of people did, but early on I started recognizing that they weren't all they weren't as that great of an investment of my limited funds more likely for a greater investment was to invest in source books so when they call this as an official game accessory this is a source book this is a regional source book that opens up a whole section of a sandbox within a sandbox and to me this is far outweighs any one module some modules have their place don't get me wrong i do own a few i've some i've done some videos on them uh, but it, for the most part my money would go to this sort of stuff here all right, so what we got here on the inside of the cover is the Bedine languages and names, a few words in, uh, right, a few handy phrases, some dangers of the desert. And we get the introduction of the Anorak, the Great Desert. Now there came, a, there was a map with this, and I haven't ha taken the time to dig through my pile of junk to find a map that goes with it, uh, you know, Someday I ought to get myself a, an, a a proper portfolio folder, something that I can put these maps in and, and keep them uh, in one spot because I think that would probably be the best bet. But like I said, I know there's there's references to a map, and I'm pretty sure that there was a map with this one. So we get the introduction, Anorak the Great Desert, the secrets of the desert, and you got various sections of it. The deserts, let's see. We got the sword, the whirlwind tour of the Anorak. So here's an abridged version of the map. The sword, trade routes to the Anorak, the desert's edge, the plain of standing stones, the high ice, and then a couple of the bad guys. You know, the, the Fahirigam, Fahirigam. I have never been able to pronounce these ugly doof, doofuses' names. And caverns under the rich human kingdoms in an area of the Underdark known as the Faril. Berlin dwelt a, ancient, a race of ancient fell beings who had long worked to mastering magic to defend themselves against the predators of the realms of below. This frame known as the Ferrum is a uh, Berlin them. They are fully detailed in the entry in the monsters. The Anorak's chapter in this book uh, are foul and dangerous to the human eye, but they work magic as dragons do, and aggressiveness and intelligence are not very different from their from humans. All right. There's a picture of one of them bad boys. I have used these guys more than once in campaigns as a as an uber bad. They work they work real well. Uh, fortunately for all the surface uh, life on Faerun, the Fer the Frillum are not the only magically powerful race who dwelt in the north at the time. It was the Sharon who connected in a vast powerful magic that that prevents these the Ferrum from these boogers from just spreading out all over the world. So they're kind of confined to the areas of the Anorak above and below it, specifically below it. And we get Bedine societies. The nature of the Bedines. The Bedine are the 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 normal human tribes that live in the desert and the desert is like it says it also has a section of high ice and and uh, 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 glacier work and things like this so it's not the you know it's not just a desert it's a very complicated environment so we got the nomadic experience the bedine dealing with others these are challenges this whole environment is a real challenge when you get players who who are not a fan of resource management Resource management, keeping track of uh, 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 of things like time and weather, and, and uh, dealing with all the challenges of just getting to the adventure site. This is not an area for them to be in. You know, the players probably better than 70% of the flavor for the Androk region is survival and just getting around. And, and doing so, you know, with a plum. Just saying. 
it's my opinion anyway. Then we get into, let's see, where are we going? Garb and Adorm is still talking to Bedine. Magic's in the Bedine. Bedine do not tolerate magic. They are very anti-magic. They will kill you. Camels, camels are very important to the Bedine. Desert travel, warfare. Then we get into the Ferrum. These sinister beings, beings detailed in the Monsters of Anorak chapter, they also show up in a couple of the, the monster manuals too. I think they're in the Monster Manual Encyclopedia, I think, as well. Uh, their mind controlling spells hold hold even Ithalads in thrall and influence in a subtle but all pervasive role all creatures beneath the Anorak. PCs in the buried realms must make intelligence check at least once per turn or fall under a Ferium charm or suggestion. That's one of the, da the dangers of running around in the desert. In this particular desert, there are so many of these things lurking under the ground that you constantly have to be checking uh, to make sure you don't become a. Uh, unknowingly under their influence. That's part of the biggest challenges, both as a GM and as the players, is to keep that underlying, because technically every every com or every round they should be checking. According to this, you should make a, a damn save every round. Well, it's just inevitable you're gonna fail the damn save. Um, the catch-22 is do you recognize the fact that you failed the save? You know, or should say the character recognizes that there's something off. Xantarium and Anorak, the, the other large party of people that you're going to run into or, or problems are the Zental, the Xantarium, Zental, from Zental Keep, and uh, increasingly stronger presence in the region, uh, which is interesting considering that they would be still in, still have to deal with the same magical influence suggestion and charm spells that, that, that are purveyant all over this place by these, these, these Ferrum. Just saying, you know, it is what it is. Zentrum have always been good baddies. Nobody loves it. Very few people love the Zentrum. I have not encountered anybody who think that they're a great faction. Uh, the people of the Androk, the Detrag, the landscape, or this is the sword. Uh, the Lashritz, these ruthless, aggressive, desert dwelling, intelligent lizards are fully dis uh, detailed in the monsters of Androk, right? The Llama. The infamous flesh-eating race in Lama are rarer than Antrak than they are in the southerly, southerly deserts as those of Kalasham. Perhaps because the, fle uh, the flesh to eat is rare. What do we got at the door? Something. No, who's trying? What? What are you doing? That's that dude at the door. What are you doing in there? Frankie was in a box, clawing the inside of the box. Yeah. What? Behave yourselves. The Lama. I, these are not a. The, these have been in D and D for d decades, and I don't think I've used them very often. They're they're a weird species to use. Outsiders. Now we get into the section of the sword, the landscape, the desert by day, desert by night, weather in the sword, desert wildlife. Strange and the unknown, desert plants, typical plant varieties, desert crops, use that term loosely, oasis, there's a whole chapter on chapter on a, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing in the box? Why are you scratching the inside of the box? Why are you being weird? Created an oasis, yeah, that's something else that they were able to achieve. The Xantarium has managed to create some artificial o oasis using magic. So the Xantarium have hit upon an ingenious practice, growing an oasis around a decanter of endless water. At least five of such bases are known to exist in the desert. So the chosen sites are often bolsons, natural basins at the foot of mountains and ridges and shielded by the worst. So they, they use a magic item that creates a non-stop water to create an oasis. That's pretty brilliant. You know, I mean, really it is. Places in the sword, there's a town of Abbas Babar, one of the few. Algon's Pass, Altar's Looking Glass, Esosacerat, words I can't pronounce, more words I can't pronounce. Colored Waters, El Mura, more words I can't pronounce, blah, right? You want to pronounce them, you buy the book and read it. Hills of the Scent, Lion's Eye Oasis, they go through 
A lot of terrain and territory and yes, that's Frankie in the box there, Missy. She's not hurt nothing. Oasis of Vipers. Quarter of Emptiness. The Shoals of Thirst, the Scimitar Spires, the Sisters of Rain, Talbadar, another small town. Not very many towns. Right. Wall of the Fallen Din, Fallen Jin, Well of the Chasm, Well of the Cloven Rock, making the sword your own. The Plains of Standing Stones, places on the plain. The central age of the Great Desert is not a sandy waste, but a wind-whipped, almost treeless, rocky plain. That world is highly fa uh, fantasy misnomer, although this broad, belt-like area does rise above the sand in the plateau, right? Anything but a plain. So, it is some real challenging terrain, without a doubt. Then we get into the section of the high ice. No human has ever found the northern edge of the snow and ice and... F if there is one of the seemingly endless expanse of snow ice and finally glacial ice that covers the northern reaches of Anorak, a desolate wind flayed as wilderness of the more southerly and dry areas of Anorak, the high ice, sometimes called the high land, is old in, in the old text, is an ice plain broken by deep crevasses and roamed by dangerous remores. Remestine on the fabled Yeti, crevice dwelling ice troves, and packs of winter wolves and scurrying snow snakes in the, in the a local white-furred, icy-blooded species of normal constrictor. All right. The frozen sea and score. Yeah, this is a lot of terrain, a lot of stuff. Spell guard. Urm, the high ice. Oh, what the spell guard reference was. So the weather's southern edge of the high, broken region known as the Fallen Lands meets the western edge of Anorak, a serpentine rocky ridge rises from the sands. That ridge is crowned by a vast grand castle called Spellguard. There you go. Arson of the high ice, rift of stars, the smoke holes, Lashlock, the lake of ice. Oh, these names are something else. Hard for me to focus on some of these words, too, to be honest. The lost kingdoms. Lots of lost kingdoms here. That's one of the reasons that draw most people to this very, you know, un and very formal region of Feyrun. You don't come here for the for the for for social hour. It's because of all these lost kingdoms under the desert, and literally under the under the desert, that people come looking for this, uh, for the loot and magic, and a lot of those are true. Just as many of them are f are falsehoods created by the Pharaoh to lure people into their region, into their grasp. Because you know, I'm just saying, winds and sand music. Or excuse me, winds and sand magic. Sand Whisper, Wind Compass, Flying Jambra, Jambiaya, Pillar of Sand, Sand Shadow, Fine Water, Whispering Sand, Wind Shadow, Sand Healing, you think, uh, man, you know, you know Make Water would be one real useful spell to be having out here. Life Water, yeah, Create Water, right there. Not quite the same thing as, that's a knife level wizard spell compared to uh, the clerical spell. Uh, NPCs, the Anorak individuals. We got Belkras, the slaver. News and rumors in the Anorak. Anorak adventures, it says here. Cer certain stone pillars in the northern sands move about by themselves. When the nights are dark, they sometimes move as far as the, as an a night as a fast driven camel does by day and they cry out to each other at times horrible deep groaning sounds that make one's teeth itch to hear them one is moving steadily towards the oasis of vipers right. here's another rumor an oasis has been found where there has been never been one before it looks old and well established with several trees and a deep pool it's no mirage and the camels who drank from the pool were world sated. 
Fresh gnawed bones are found under the, uh, one of the trees, uh, all under the, one of the trees though, and they were human. Right. Oh. Old bones, old magic, entering, entering adventures, spindle skulls tomb, watch out for the death tyrant, venture hooks, there we go. The Larati, however you want to pronounce it, lizard people, called Asbius by the Bedine, all these Desert dwelling reptiles are superficially similar to lizard men in the swamplands. They tend to be brown or gray in hue and done and blah. Right. Then we get the Dark Nagus, the Urpasu, the Fairhem themselves, the Tome Tap the Tomb Tapper. The Fer the Fair Tim are powerful magic using beings that move by natural levitation. They resemble upright cones, the widest part up uppermost and point ending in barbed stinger tail. Now these things have been around for a long time and they crop up in a number of uh, Feyrun uh, or Forgotten Realms novels uh, as as remote bad guys. At least two or three different uh, times that come to my mind off the top of the head, although I couldn't tell you which books they were in. I've got a slew of Forgotten Realms novels out here. You know, it's been a while since I've read any of them, but but uh, there was I was an avid reader of them back in the day when they were coming out. So anyway, this is the Anorak by Ed Greenwood. Like I said, these are great books. I really like them. They give it some flavor. One of the beautiful things about this, you know, this kind of setting is it doesn't have to be in Forgotten Realms. The, this would translate, the sandbox setting would translate just about any game system you want to use, in my opinion, uh, in a fantasy or high fantasy sword and sorcery kind of way. Uh, if you strip away the magic from uh, the game and you could still tap this for just about any other game. So you could use this as a symbol, uh, you know, a, a, a desert world on an alien, a desert alien world, for example, uh, for Star Wars or Star Trek or a hundred other space-based game systems. Just an example, right? Uh, it's just, I always love these kind of books. Anyway, I'm Rick. You're not. Little Missy, little Missy sitting over here behaving herself. Frankie's back here. Where are you, Frankie? Where'd you go? You're not in the box anymore. Oh, are you hiding that, Frank? Are you in that box? You're not in that box. Where'd you go? You didn't go out there. Oh, she's hiding in here somewhere. Anyway, till next time. You guys have yourself a great day.